Hello everyone, Alex RC Freak coming at you with another video on part two of the lift kit install. So we got the front section done, which is right over there. These scissors are over here because these are the upper links. And I know it looks like a mess over here, but it is. So anywho, let's get started with it. Let's move these scissors out of your way here. And so now let's grab the rear axle. So these are the upper links. So we're gonna start with the upper links. Now, if you notice, see how these are pointed? So these two, see if you notice that these are pointing towards the inside. These go on towards the vehicle. These go towards the axle. The ones that are kind of pointing out at an angle go towards the axle, just so you know. So I'm gonna stick these like that. So that way you do not lose orientation of them. Or, you know, the right way to install them, I guess you could say. And we're just gonna install them. These are pretty easy to do. I got all oil all over my rear axle, it's driving me insane, so I'll have to clean that off. But you just grab these and stick these over with your stockpile. And you just stick it in just like so. Like literally that easy. It's, you know. And uh, one thing with these, if you have the TRX4, def or TRX4, is the TRX4, yeah, so I am right. I'm tired, forgive me. The TRX4 Defender version you have to install the longer rod ends that are supplied. So, just so you guys know, that's just something to note. So I'm gonna tighten that screw real quick. Let me get my hand out of the way for you. Okay, so I'm gonna loosen these lower links here i loosen those screws right here there's two millimeter allens these are all also using a two millimeter allen um, but you're going to loosen these two screws switch out the shocks for the better shocks and uh yeah okay so i loosen these four socket head screws there's four of them right here now uh, well you guys can see that the focus is there's socket this is a socket head style sorry about the background noise so now I took out this uh, E-clip out of the diff lock cable. So now you just pop this off like so. Make sure you got grease in there because I grease my stuff good. And then this is when you want to kind of see if you can get in here and pry up on this very carefully. Just enough to get it free. You want to take out the shift cable. And uh... Just kind of turn it and take this extra grease and just kind of wipe it on the the uh, shaft right there and then I'm going to take this shift cable and stick it right on over here I'm going to grab this new one stick the new shift cable on through here like so just do that with the shift cable stick it in now this is where you want to kind of make sure you get it in the groove right. Make sure you pop it in the groove. Okay. Should work smooth. Okay. Bam. So that's all you need to do. So let me bring you up close in the camera here. Because you guys probably aren't seeing this the best. Okay, so let me get some light over here. So basically, you got this piece you have to pop out. You want to make sure it works where it slides that locker piece in there. You want to make sure that works good. Okay. So make sure you pull your cable gently all the way back. Now I'm going to try popping this in. I don't know how old you guys can take it. It's a mess, I know. Sorry, it's, it should have been a lot more better prepared for you guys. But I'm going to see if I can do this on camera for you guys. So this is a new E clip. They're kind of tricky to put on. So I'm going to see if I can attempt to stick it on, on the camera. There we go. Bam, just like that. So you just got to take some patience. It pops on. Then you got to put your cover back on. Making sure that you get keep everything well lubricated like I usually do. 
It's good. I mean, if you're if your diff's running dry, or if it, if you're one of those people that like like I say that likes to make bad decisions and drive your rig in mud, which I think is a totally bad decision. But uh, you'll probably have rust and stuff on your bearings or in your bearings. I guarantee it, and on your portal gears, portal. Uh, and gears or whatever they're inside here and your ring and pinning you're probably gonna be filled with rust if you do that and don't properly maintain it immediately after you're done running your vehicle so that's the thing people don't seem to think about you know you want to crisscross these when you tighten them i don't know how well you guys can see that whoops See if I can get you a little better view there. Okay. So I'm going to tighten these. Okay, so now you're ready to install the uh, The back section. So you want to take your shift cable that cooperates with you, stick it, stick it like that. Take these. Oh, well, first you want to make sure you get your shift cable situated correctly, the right side. So this thing is just messing with me today, isn't it? So, you want to try to stick your parts in the truck. Cool. Can get the dang thing to cooperate. There we go. Okay, so let's see if we can get you up a little closer here. Let's see if I can get you a good view here. Okay, so these longer bolts right here. These two longer ones go on the sides right here. And then these shorter ones So, you want to take your rear link, sorry I had a screw in my mouth, take your uh, screw, pop it in there like so, basically force your back end on this thing to cooperate with you, there we go, and just tighten up these four screws. quick and voila so after you're done fighting the thing a little bit you got your back end bolted it looks like it does sit a little higher um i believe that it already sits That's, this is just rough guessing here there's no tires on it. it sits almost three and a half inches in the front end uh gets on there because before it was like, when I did the lift on it, it was like, I don't know, it was like, I can't remember what it was. I was thinking it was like, I don't know, can't, I can't remember, honestly. But uh, it's, it's been a long night. Alright, so, anyway, you want to take your cable that you brought on over. And you want to stick your rod in your little uh, end on it. 
So you can grab it by your hands very gently, start threading it on. It's actually threading on really good by hand. Yeah, see now you need now you need pliers because it gets, it's getting tighter, you know. So so okay. Now you take this. I don't know how well you guys can see this. How well you guys could I even saw that. Sorry about that. So anyway, just take this thing, stick this groove, this collar part, the cable inside that groove. So just push it down in there. That's all you need to do is push it down in there. And you just need to loosen this screw. You don't need even need to re completely take it out. So and you just snug it down. That's all you need to do. You don't need to crank it. Snug it down. Take it. Push down on your servo horn there that's connected you're basically your back end of your rig is done so let's go to the front so now the front you gotta loosen these i don't know how well you guys can see that here let me back it up a little bit so you gotta loosen one two three four five six screws so plus you gotta loosen the servo horn so um, I may loosen the servo horn right now just to be on the safe side. That's a 2 millimeter or 2.5 millimeter. So that's a blue Allen for me. If I can get to it. It's kind of a tight honker to get to. So you gotta put that bracket in. Yeah, sorry guys, you guys ain't even getting the view of that. So you just loosen your servo horn, or servo screws and the servo horn. You'll need an aluminum servo horn, I would recommend strongly if you have a raw collar, if this is brand new to you. I really recommend you guys getting one, because if you don't got one, I'm telling you right now. You don't know what you're missing. So I'm gonna loosen these screws on the side. I don't know why I just try to use a 2.5 for that. Okay. Set the servo down there. Probably use the tires to lift this thing up to where it's like level, but it's whatever. Whatever. Okay, now you want to loosen one of your. I'm just gonna actually, you know, I am gonna use a tire or maybe two. You can use two tires. It's a little high, but there. That way, you guys. Sorry about that camera view. I really apologize. So that way you guys can see what I'm doing a little easier, you know. So you loosen one side of these. Now this is a rear bumper mount on the front. You have to cut it, and you have to cut it in the back to get it to fit, but I actually like it because it raises up the bumper a little bit. You get better approach angles that way. So letting your servo sit there like that is probably not a good idea. Just take this whole thing off like that. Now you can just pop this away here. Might be able to
pretty tight. So I'll sit there and try popping this thing away here. I don't know. I don't like feel like I'm gonna bend the chassis to do it. Alrighty, so quick note, if you have the TRX4 original version, this is for the uh, track bar for the front axle. The track bar to keep the axle from going side to side. Well, it hangs down and you gotta cut it off. So I had to cut it off flush so that way it'll fit over the chassis. That's something they don't tell you in the instructions. So just so you guys know, I'm going to put these screws back in and uh, I'll get right back. Okay, so got the steering servo mounted in. I did not loosen the servo horn. And uh, now we're going to flip this thing over. And uh, I'm going to tighten this servo horn screw here. I loosened it. I'm just snug it up. That's all you need. Don't need a grill to tighten that. This one, Make sure you lock tight that. I've had that screw come out on me a couple times on this truck. So, what you want to do is make sure to get your shocks. I don't know what it is with A holes tonight. Speeding non-stop right by where it was like I really don't get it tonight So after you get your drag link set up, you want to attempt to get your, you know, it looks like a bit of a mess right now, but stick your cable through there. So you want to grab your screws because you know this is not going to cooperate. There we go. Okay, so. I'm trying to get the thing in there. Of course it pops out. A little bit of a pain in the... Rear. Okay, so after you finally get the screw in there, you come over to this section here and pop in these links. I wish they made a true four link for this thing. I think it'd be pretty cool. in like so. Take that. That popped in, so let's tighten these screws down. Okay, so once you got those all tightened down, you're going to switch over to this section, tighten these down again, because I had to loosen them to get that uh, pitman arm drop in there, that new mount. Okay, 
that, so I'm gonna stick these screws in there for the bumper. These are two millimeter Allen's. These are all two millimeter screws, by the way, Allen's. Except for my servo uh, screws, they were uh, two point five millimeter. But I also have aftermarket screws in there and servo and stuff like that. So. Pretty good, so now I gotta stick the shocks on. I'm gonna put these on. Okay, so I got everything bolted. Got that drag link bolted in, suspension's bolted in. Yeah, I would like a four. I'd like to see a four link on this. I think it'd be extremely beneficial. Okay, so once you got that all done, you want to take it. See if I can get you some better views here. Okay, so this little ball end right here. Take this after you have it put in. Put this in the groove. Stick that in the groove, just like so. Tighten this uh, screw down because you don't want it falling out. As you can tell, it tried falling out already. Take this, this is spring loaded. You want to get it, adjust this to where this, the thing is relaxed. And uh, like this cable is relaxed, but this thing you want to, you might have to kind of like mess around with it a little bit, but. There you go, you want to pop that on like so. And then basically, you're ready for 2.2 tires or whatever you want to stick on there pretty much. So, um, yeah, that's, that's really about it. That's all that really goes into it. Like, let's see how it sits now with nothing on it. So, yeah, it's about three and a quarter. Yeah, it's three and a quarter. So, um, yeah, that's basically uh, it for today. And I just want to say thank you guys for um, tuning in and watching. I appreciate it. And uh, Alex RC Free. Well, actually, take that back. You got to put your center drive lines, your drive lines in. How could I forget that? How could I forget that? Okay, so so I'm gonna put the drive shafts together, and like I say, you want to make sure you look at the instructions as a reference. And uh, there's the green dots on the end of it you can see that here I don't know how well so there's green dots on the end of it if you get the kit you'll have instructions obviously it's always a good thing to look over it I'm gonna do that and assemble it and put them on I think I'm gonna call this video done and because uh, they're pretty easy to install and uh, yeah I want to call this video done make sure to install these I almost forgot <laughs> that'd be bad you get out of the track, you forget to, or you get out on the trail and you forget to install those. But, you know, I guess worse things, worse things can happen, you know? Alright, well, Alex RC Freak out. Peace.